Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight TV Edition, I'm Peter, that's Timmy. We are of course working our way through Tales from the Crypt, the original horror anthology series from HBO. And this is going to be Season 2, Episode 5, it's called Three's a Crowd. Full spoilers for the episode as always, and let's get into it. Timmy. Yes. I don't know about you, right? Okay. But I love this episode. Really? Now let me let me explain. Wow. Okay. Before before you go, I don't love it in the right way. I love it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I love it for what it is. Yeah. You know. See, because right, right as the episode starts, right, and you know the woman Della comes home, and her husband Richard is sitting in the dark, waiting. He's smoking and drinking. He's like, you know. Clearly, it, and it comes into him, and the music's so like sort of like melodramatic, and he's like sitting there, and I'm like, holy crap, that's no one's even said a word yet, and it's already the most overacting thing <laughs> I've seen in a while. So, right away, I was on board. I was on board for just silly, over the top, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is that like within the first like couple of seconds you kind of know like oh this is going to be one of those serious episodes or at least like an attempt at mm -hmm. uh being serious um I, I i'll i'll be honest with you though i think this is like the first one that i like actively kind of disliked oh like, wow, okay um i'm not gonna like i'm not gonna say i you know like hated it and was like you know oh screw this show but uh, by the end, I was kind of like, ah, that, yeah, was, I don't know. I just found it like kind of frustrating. I, I don't know. Which, like for me, because it was so over the top and cheesy. Like they were trying to yeah. be serious, but the the actor who's playing Richard, who's the husband, who is jealous, and they've got this old high school friend Alan, who was apparently the best man at his wedding, but he dated his wife in high school, and she's spending some time with them, so he's getting jealous. And he, he gets so jealous and so paranoid about every little thing. And, like, and to be honest, there's the odd thing where I actually kind of think it's justifiable. Like, there's a moment right. when uh, they're on a boat, right? Because basically Alan invites them out to his, like, sort of holiday home for the weekend for their anniversary. Yeah. And they're on a boat at one point, and Richard's, like, just sort of, like, moping around in the middle of the boat, and he looks over, and randomly mid-conversation his wife Della kisses Alan on the cheek now don't get me wrong if this was the hello or the goodbye yeah. that would be normal right you know kissing the cheek perfectly normal this is like mid-conversation and it's also as close to the mouth as humanly possible without actually being on this, the mouth yeah I I would almost argue that this was like <laughs> uh, like I feel like it was close enough to classify this as like non-cheek it's like that it's like that outer outer rib of the cheek <laughs> like and it, it, this it, what was so frustrating uh, about this to me is like the whole movie or <laughs> not whole movie, movie episode it yeah. was, was that a long 25 <laughs> minutes to me we, we go, oh my god this is just so long oh god let, let it end please it does it did feel pretty long but um no like the, the whole episode it, it's kind of like all right, something's going on here. Either these two are having an affair, or they're, they're not. not. But <laughs> it's that simple. It's one of the two. But but if they're not, they're still acting super weird in a way that would like I think be very reasonable to make anyone like uncomfortable and jealous. Sure, sure. Uncomfortable and jealous. Sure. Richard goes way past that point, though. Uh, halfway through, he he goes past of the course, point where yeah. he, he starts acting so ridiculous and crazy to the point that he eventually starts committing murder. He kills uh, both Alan and Della yeah. at the end of the episode. I will say this: from the moment he stepped, because obviously they're staying at his like you know uh, holiday home, and he he wakes up, she's not there. He comes out and like he overhears them. He's like upstairs and he's like listening to them down out in the balcony, and they're talking about a secret, right? And as soon as that scene happened, I called the ending exactly. I knew exactly what the twist was. And not only did I guess the twist, I guessed every part of the twist. <laughs> I immediately said, no, 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 they're planning a surprise for him, right? And I said, she's pregnant. Because they mentioned that they'd tr be trying to have kids. You know, it was just such an obvious twist that, 
you know, when Richard starts going nut job, and he, he basically, he reminds me a lot of Gary Busey, actually. He even looks a little bit like him. So when, he's, when he starts acting crazy, and he just pulls out this giant crossbow, <laughs> and like, you know, Alan laughs it off, but then he just starts shooting him with a crossbow. Oh, so, I, I was just, I was having fun with how cheesy bad it was. Like, I agree it wasn't good, yeah. but like, I was having fun with the over the top, you know, melodrama of it. Yeah, no, there was, uh, like, it, it is enjoyable in that sense, but um, there's just this thing that, like, really, <laughs> like, uh, kind of, like, annoys me in uh, movies and TV and stuff when uh, there, there are these, like, escalating conflicts that could easily be solved by, like, you know, people just sitting down and having like a five minute conversation. What well, like, do, do you mean? Like when, like Rachel starts freaking out and acting like a drunken fool, and <laughs> Della still just doesn't come out and say, "Look, we're just planning a surprise," or something. Yeah, you know, like, like it's yeah. like he is obviously like going insane, and like even if they don't think like, "Oh, he's gonna kill me," they could have. And unless they're just like the worst friend and wife in the world, they should be able to have enough common sense to be like, oh, hey, look, like he's becoming like reclusive and destructive. And like, you know, maybe we should just tell him like, you know, you don't have to ruin the surprise, yeah. but you can just be like, hey, we have something big planned for you. Just you, you know, just wait or something yeah, like he, just anything. Even, even if you don't go that far, even if you don't say, oh, they can see what damage is happening. At the very base level, they should go, oh, he looks kind of upset. Yeah. We should yeah. maybe make him feel better. Like, that's it. It's that simple. Uh, and, so. and, you know, I, I know what the twist at the end is, but I'm still not 100% convinced they weren't having an affair. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it still seems, like, way too, like, crazy that, like, like they are basically ignoring him. Like, even when they're yeah. hanging out on the boat, like, you know, you can still talk to him but without being like on the complete well, other side I'm, of the boat I'm going to play the devil's advocate here Timmy right? just yeah, for a little bit okay. just to argue this point from the other side I think in a couple of occasions the the implication is maybe more that Richard himself is excluding himself from okay. the event it just looks like that way uh, and the rest of the stuff and again devil's advocate I'm not saying I believe this I, I'm kind of on the side that they're just they were really goofy <laughs> the way they did this but Devil's Advocate, you could maybe argue that the reason why everything looks as dodgy as it does is because we see everything from his perspective. His point so is, so yeah. they manipulate it in such a way that it feels like this and that, and it feels like they're kissing. But in actual fact, like, you know, maybe they could have done like a quick flashback where you see the kiss and it was like up here, like <laughs> near the eye, yeah. you know, or something stupid like that. Yeah, that could definitely be possible. Don't get me wrong, uh, though. The amount that Alan yeah. touches our legs and stuff is like, yeah. really, like, you know, too yeah, much. It's uh, it, it it's definitely too much. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then like, I mean, besides that, like, um, you know, there have been other ones where I wasn't crazy about the story, but then, like, maybe they would have like some cool special effects or monster makeup or gore or something at the end that would kind of redeem it a little bit for me but we really don't get much you know in this um he shoots the friend with the yeah. bow and arrow i think for me i was just enjoying just, the bad acting admittedly the episode yeah. would have multiplied by 10 if they actually had gary Busey play the role oh <laughs> without a doubt i mean what uh yeah. you know tv show wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> exactly i mean yeah. Anything like you know, like remake Breaking Bad with Gary Busey instead of Brian Cranston, <laughs> and you're, it's going up, going up, going up in everyone's ranks. You know what it is. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I it was just it was a goofy time. It was melodramatic and over the top, and the music was really adding to it. Like it was this like noir music that was coming in and like you know making it even more cheesy. Uh, I love the yeah. moment when he finds like the the present, the stocking, and the and the the drawer. Oh, yeah. And he thinks it's like sexy underwear for him, and he's like he starts carrying it around, and he, then he strangles or what? Like, but his reaction to his reaction to everything, his over the top like death stare, was cracking yeah. me up. Yeah, uh, you know, he's probably some type of psychopath. Even like, like even if um, 
if this hadn't happened, I'm sure something would have set him off at some point. Well, I think that's actually worth talking about, is that it seems to be... Because it even brings up at one point that Alan's quite wealthy. He's, you know, he's made a, yeah. made a name for himself. He's made a lot of money. And Richard had to give up his job selling insurance and take a job in a bar. And he feels inadequate in his life in general. Like, everything in his life. Like, he can't give her a baby. He's not making much money. He's, you know, you know doing a dead-end job. Like, the whole sort of thing is kind of like... It's basically a midlife crisis where he's not where he wants to be and he feels like he's failing at everything. And it almost feels like he's perceiving... Alan is coming in and taking the one last thing that he had left, which was his marriage, his wife. Yeah. So that's kind of where the paranoia comes from. And I feel like I'm possibly overanalyzing this when it's not really that deep. <laughs> but at the same time, yeah. I think that's what they're actually going for. I think I think that's what's really going on. It's just so goofy that you, you know. Yeah. It, I mean, it's not like, it, it, it's not a bad idea, but I don't know. Maybe it could have been uh, executed better or, well, you thought- know, maybe it's just not, you know, meant for like a half hour of this. Well, that's the thing. I feel like I've seen this done better. And typically, what happens is, is you start when they're happy, whereas this one starts and he's already sense. in a dark corner, like moping, like brooding and waiting for her to come in through the door so he can question yeah. her, like, "Where were you, women?" You know. Yeah. <laughs> Said you were going to be one hour and you've been five. What, what's going on? You know, like, he's already at yeah. that stage. So it's like we jump in the middle, which sometimes I enjoy, depending on the plot. But with this, it's kind of weird because. You know, like, it already feels like their marriage is a shambles. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. But yeah. Hey, I, I'm okay with the occasional Goofy episode. I, I think I kind of like this more than the last one, probably. Just in terms of, like, fun. All in. Uh, I, I think, well, I think the big difference with the last one is I, I really liked the, um, like, zombie makeup and stuff. Mm, so, that, that at least had a, a, a little bit for me but hey that's uh oh, yeah. that's this week's uh, tales from the crypt uh we will be back next weekend with the next episode uh so thanks very much for watching guys let us know what you thought of this one in the comments below like and subscribe and all that stuff it helps us out a lot we'll see you next time <laughs>